And now we're going to cross over to the USS Olympia, which is uh, docked or berthed right next to it. And sun's kind of in the wrong spot for good videos here. But, uh, I'm going to zoom this along here. Well, first thing I notice when I come on board the Olympia is the abundance of wood. Very ornate. And, uh, I don't know when this was. This was back in the 19th century, remember? And I'll get the year when I do the uh, text on this video. But you can see down here, a little low clearance with some of those pipes. But everything, nice wood here. Here we have in here, everything fitted out over here inside. Lots of wood in there. Come back out here. You can see there's various rooms on either side. This big beautiful sitting area here. You can almost have a party down here. More other rooms inside. Some old typewriter in there. Portholes again. Looking through plexiglass there. More rooms. And this is what is known as Officer's Country Birth Deck. So... This is pictures of how it looked in 1899. And in 1902, looks about the same to me. These are senior officers' quarters. There's toilets here too, although I haven't seen them. Uh, this is the officer's bathroom. They have a plexiglass door on here now, but uh, got your privacy there. Get your pretty nice ceramic toilets. And possibly showers back there, I can't tell. And on this side is officer's washroom. There's just basically sinks there and a, some sort of a cabinet. And this looks like the showers here for the officers. Very quite roomy. Lots of room here. And I'm going to come back out here. Still continuing through the officer's salon area. Very beautiful. Lots of room here in the center. And we're going to go down here to this section. And let's see what this is here. Uh, I don't know. Some sort of a conference room or something. Kind of dark in here. But a lot of room. I'm sure in its heyday it looked quite nice. Now this is the wardroom. And even inside the wardroom we got a couple guns over there that you see on the outside of the ship. Another gun up here. Down at the other end. Now I'm not sure what this is. But uh, it's actually open to the elements up there, although now they have plexiglass on the outside. But normally I think this would be open. And uh, I don't know what would have been in here. The ventilation or something? I don't know what's down there. Maybe the steam turbines. Can't go down there anyhow, so maybe part of it will be there but we're going to continue on and by the way this is a watertight door you see this a lot in the ship it says watertight door although I don't think to me it looks like it would be that watertight that could actually hold the water back okay now we're going to another room here as I said Lots of room on a ship. Lots of wide spaces where just nothing's going on. Just empty space. So, of course, back in the 1800s, didn't have really electronics or anything. 
Here we're looking through a wire grate. This looks like uh, some kind of a uh, machine shop. There's a button here we can press. And you can see the various things in action. There we go, that was the machine shop. They were working on different things. This is where they made it. Big, gigantic, heavy tools. Run by uh, pulleys with the leather straps, I guess. And you can see on the ceiling, Kearney. Okay. I guess this is where the uh, crew slept and ate. And they had basically, it looks like, hammocks. Plain old canvas hammocks. They don't seem very wide. They're only like uh, maybe two feet wide at the most. And of course we have another gun sticking out here. Look like very puny guns here, but back in the 1800s, I guess that was pretty good. But like I said, lots of room here. We have old benches. And still more hammocks. And lots more empty space. A uh, couple of dials there. So maybe they, I don't know what they did with all that empty space on here. Seems like they could have made the ship half the size, go twice as fast. I don't know. This looks like, uh, says the fireman's washroom. Firemen, I guess, would be the guys that stoke the boilers. Presuming this is a uh, steam-powered ship. Burned coal, I guess, and that's like a little washroom there. Yeah, you could wash up. Still lots of room there, too. Come back in here, and uh, I'm not sure what this is. Looks like more cruise quarters. More big open spaces here. And come back down here, more hammocks, and more hammocks, and just lots of hammocks and lots of empty space. So I guess if you needed to put in another couple hundred hammocks, you'd have plenty of room. So we're going back in the next room here. Here we have the ash hoist. It says buckets of coal ash were hoisted to this deck and dumped overboard. So did it by hand here, I guess. I guess they had a porthole, or it looks like a sheet there, perhaps. I guess it opened up where they could dump it. All right, let's go back in here. More open space, more open space. This is sick bay around 1917. Hey, you had a bathtub in there. And a toilet there. A couple of bunks. And I guess that was pretty much it. Well, here's something I didn't know. Scuttlebutt. Olympia is the first U.S. Navy ship fitted with a mechanically chilled drinky water dispenser or scuttlebutt. Well, wow, how about that? Didn't know that. There it is. Okay. More hammocks. I was on the wrong side before, so let's move forward. Of course, you got your barber shop. Got to have a barber chair for a proper shave and a haircut. Oh, I'm sorry. This is probably not the barber shop. It's probably a dentist office, judging by the tools. My mistake. Maybe it's for, for both. I don't know. But I don't see a sign here, but it could be for dentist. And this is the dispensary here. Got another little short bed. I guess people weren't as tall in those days. Pardon if you need an operation. This is where it was done. This is the operating room. Not a whole lot. It's kind of a crude autoclave there to sterilize instruments. And this, I would guess, is the crew's head or the crew's bathroom. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight toilets. There's your urinal there. 
So it looks like no waiting. And a little wash sink over there. So must have smelled nice in here, I guess. And it's blocked off down there. This looks like the chapel here. They even have a little piano or organ in there. And a lot of religious items in here too. This is one of the larger guns here. And this is what's known as the main deck. And I guess to aim the guns, maybe they had a set of binoculars there. I'm not really sure, but there's on this deck a few more of these larger guns. This is the rations room, or what I would call a chow hall. We have a wooden countertop, big kettles, not much has changed from those days to, to now. And it looks like coal fired stoves over there, I would guess. And we have an opening at the top with sunlight coming in. And I guess they had openings here because even though they had chimneys for these coal fire stoves, I guess it would get pretty hot in here on hot days. And we come back out here and you can see I'm looking through a little a little opening there because you can't go inside. And I don't know what room this is here. Maybe uh, another officer's area, of course. Got another big gun out the side there, right in here. But it's beautiful. A lot of ornate wood. Uh, cabinets, fancy dishes in here too. So keep in mind, this was a, a warship here, I guess. Oh, this was the Admiral's suite with the big fireplace and the gun. And you can see it says May 1898. So uh, this is more than 100 years old here. And you can see the big ship's wheels there. The old wooden type wheels from uh, sailing ships of the old days. And you're kind of out here in the weather here too. I would presume they have other steering mechanisms down below. But right here, you're standing out in the weather, and uh, my head just clears walking under here. And you can see if you had to steer here, you really can't see anything up there. But presumably, I guess this is the front of the ship looking this way, perhaps. Although the flag is usually on the aft end. I'm not really sure. The way the air intakes are pointing, it would seem like this is the front of the ship. Maybe this is just an auxiliary steering area from the back. I don't know, but you really can't see anything from up here. Unless some of those other, well, I don't know. And here's the Ben Franklin Bridge. A little Coast Guard cutter, small boat going by. That's the Ben Franklin Bridge right there in New Jersey on the other side. And uh, there's the aft end of the ship. And we're going to come around and we're going to look down at the submarine that we were just on, which is down below there. Yes, this is the front of the boat. So the steering column was way in the back, although I see a little compartment up the next level, which we're going to visit in a second. But the uh, submarine that we're on is right next to it. And there's the sub. And here's looking toward the aft part of the Olympia. Here's a big ship's wheel in this cramped compartment way up in the front of the ship. And I guess if you go in here, you got your engine controls your wheel and you got a little slit that you can look out and so if they're shooting at you you can still steer the ship through this little slit. A little hard to see here. There. Come in a little bit there. See out the side. That runs all the way around here. So this would protect you here from shells hopefully. And you got your wheel here you got your power controls. You can call down there, 
Give me full steam in half an hour. And then we go back out. Very cramped in here. And it's kind of called the conning tower. And it's a little bit tight to get in and out of here too. So we have to get back out on this side here. And crawl out. And now we're back outside here. And that's the view without the slit. Something here on the ground, footprints, the spot for from uh, where Commodore Dewey did something or other. It's worn out from so many bazillions of people stepping on it, I guess. But uh, here's the front of the ship, right here, looking down. And we got a little compass gizmo in here if you're outside. And if we come back here, we have this uh, beautiful wooden building here, or a wooden structure on the front, and it's very nice. You look inside, ah, there we got the steering wheel, plus all kind of views outside, so I guess when you're not having a battle, you can steer from up here, and it's beautiful wood in here, cushy chairs here if you want to sit, well, one chair, really, if somebody else wants to sit, and a uh, beautiful ornate wheel. And uh, I guess when the weather's good, sit up here and you have a nice view of things then. So come back out here. And this deck is probably antique here. And uh, I'm going to go back here as far as possible without falling overboard. And so you can see that. And uh, there's a big smokestack right behind it. And actually, I'm standing on this edgy thing here, holding onto my camera, looking down there. And we've got the sub right next to me. And we're going to turn around and look at the aft part of the ship. This is the aft part of the USS Olympia. And. Come back around, there's the smokestack. Okay, I'm not sure what this is. It might be the captain's office or whatnot. Although I don't think he would be doing any typing. But maybe the uh, captain's aide, I'm not sure. Very nice, all wood type furniture. A little, little bar over there, which nice thing to have, I guess, in those days. And, uh, I finished with the tour, so we're going to head on out. Today is November 1st, 2010, and I'm at the uh, Seaport Museum uh, over in Philadelphia. And we just toured the USS Olympia, which is down that way, and the submarine Bakuna. So now we're going to walk back up this way, maybe go inside the museum, see what they got there, and then uh, head back catch my uh, subways back to New Jersey. If we have time, we're going to stop at the Liberty Bell and take a couple photos there. So it's a nice day, nice and cool. So let's proceed on. <laughs>